yeah! Hey guys, it's Marche here and you're watching another episode of Exploring Music with Marche. Tips for a better performance and today we're talking about singing from the heart. Check it out! Yeah guys, before I begin, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos, and hit like if you like the video. It totally helps build the channel. Alright, let's get into it. Yeah guys, if you're going to sing a song, mean it. Not only that, know what you're singing about. That's what today's Tips for a Better Performance is all about. Singing a song with emotion, getting yourself into it, and really feeling the song. I had a few people asking me about this, and... I tell them, well, if you're going to sing a song properly, you got to become a whore. Yes, you got to prostitute your emotions. Now, what I mean by this is, if you're going to really connect with people, you got to really connect with the song. And you got to dig deep and sing that song with emotion. And you're going to be exposing your emotions for other people's entertainment. That's the bottom line. I know it sounds a bit crass and a bit, you know, ah. Uh, but that's what you're essentially doing. You know, if, if this is just about being cathartic and you know having some sort of therapy and you know getting over some problems to sing a song, you can do that at home. When you're actually getting out in front of an audience, that is totally different because what you're doing is you're going out to perform for people for their entertainment, normally for a paycheck. So you are prostituting your emotions to get that out there. And, you know, it's not a bad thing, so don't take me wrong, but I'll get into detail about what I mean in a second. When it comes to prostituting your emotions, well, that's what you're essentially doing. For three to five, for three to five minutes, you are exposing your emotions to the crowd solely for their entertainment. That is, if you want to sing a song properly, okay? Now, a lot of people might go, eh, you know, but it's true. You're right, you, the whole idea is to connect with your audience. And the only way to really do that is to get across that music and that song that you're trying to get across. And you, you can hit all the notes perfectly and just la 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 and not be interested, not connect with your audience or anything. And you'll get by, you know, but it's not going to really connect. You've got to really see what that song is saying. For example, uh, Mariah Carey's Without You. I can't live with, if living is without you. Well, don't be smiling when you're singing that song. Why? Because if you can smile, you can obviously live without that person. And if, you know, take moving pictures, Shannon Knowles, What About Me, right? It's, it's an angry song about, what about me? It's not fair. You know, it's a whinging song. I call it the whinger song, right? Because you're having a whinge, you know, life's not fair, what about me? Right? <laughs> now, if you don't, if, if you're apathetic about it, you know, like, what about me? It isn't fair, I've had enough, then I lost my share. Well, it, you don't really care, it's not, a, it's not an issue, you know, you're not really that upset about it, are you? Especially if you're happy, you know, if you're smiling and cheering with the crowd. And, you know, but that's specific songs. But like, let's take, okay, if, if you're singing a song about being heartbroken, you know, it's just like, oh, you're, you're so heartbroken, you wanna die because, you know, your boyfriend or girlfriend's cheated on you with your best friend and the world's crumbling around you, you're about to lose your house and everything else. Well, don't be smiling and winking at the audience trying to get them to clap along. You know, it, it, it's conflicting emotion. And you got to portray what the song is saying. So if it's an angry song, get angry. If it's a sad song, get sad. Find something in your life. Okay, if you can't directly relate to what the song is saying, then find an emotion that matches what that song is portraying. You know, in your own life. So if you're singing about someone dying, you can't relate because you've had no one die. Find that emotion of when a, 
when a fat pet died, because a lot of pets are like family members. So you find that emotion when your favorite pet died, or your favorite celebrity, or whatever it takes. But you find that emotion of grief, and you let that out. But the same goes for the opposite. You know, it's just like if you're singing a happy song, you know, and it's trying to get the crowd geared up. Don't be bored. You know, don't be like nothing but a good time. And it don't get better than this, you know. It's like, really? You're, you're trying to get people to get Yahoo! So get into it, jump around, have fun. If it's nothing but a good time, then look like you're having nothing but a good time. And that's what it's about. Finding the connection of the song, getting emotionally invested in the song, and sharing it with your audience. Because then they will feel that emotion that you're portraying. So this is what it's about. If you're really going to get into it, you have to find that connection. Now one of my pet peeves, you know, something I really hate is seeing young girls singing songs like Goodbye Earl by the Dixie Chicks and Last Name by Carrie Underwood. You know, like 14 and under, 15 and under, you know, you can go higher but I'm not going to be too much of a prude. But, you know, they're singing these songs and they're having a ball. It's like, know what the song is saying. All right, for those that don't know, Goodbye Earl is about a, a guy who beats his wife and the wife kills him with the help of her friend and they get away with murder, right? That's what that song's saying. So when you see a 12 year old girl smiling, singing Goodbye Earl, it's like, no, that's not how it goes. Right, and last name from Carrie Underwood. It's about a girl that goes out and gets drunk, smashed off her brain, finds a guy, hooks up with the guy, marries him, and then wakes up the next morning not knowing his name, his last name, and by turn not knowing her own last name. Now, I'm sorry, if you're a young girl and you can find something to relate to last name or goodbye Earl, there's bigger issues at hand here, really. You know, but there's no way a young kid could relate to those songs in that manner. And I'm sure that there's plenty that go, yeah, you know, but the girls like it and they like the melody and they just want to, um, you know, just sing it because they like the song. That's, I get that. But there's no way you can really relate to it to get that across. Now, of course, you know, you can hit, um, hit the notes perfectly and all that, but this is where it comes down to being technical isn't feeling the emotion of the song. Yeah, you can nail all the song, nail the whole song, note for note, perfect. But if you don't connect with it on an emotional level, it, it seems like there's something missing. You know, it's just like Guitar Heroes. For example, right? You know, you got all these amazing guitar players. Well, a thousand and one people can play those songs note for note, but they don't have the emotion when, that it came to writing those guitar parts and performing those guitar parts and what they mean to the guitarist and that to really let it out. You know, and there's just like, oh look, I can hit all the notes. It's like, yeah, but there's something lacking. And when you listen to it, it's that connection with what they're doing. And the same goes for vocalists. You take Christina Aguilera, one of my favorite all-time singers, you know, just amazing. And yeah, there's plenty of girls out there that can hit those notes, note for note. It, it, there's always something lacking because they're not making that connection with the song. And that's what makes artists great. You know, it's one thing to nail the, the songs note for note, you know, whether you're vote singers or musicians, instrument musicians or whatever. There's one thing hitting them note for note, it's another thing connecting with them and taking that song to another level. And also, if you do make mistakes, because you're just putting too much effort, like too much emotion into it and that, and you know, it, maybe it's choking you up and making you sad and all that sort of stuff, that's not going to matter to the crowd if you hit a bum note, if you're nailing that emotion. Because it's just about 
connecting with them. You're, you're making them feel. Now, do you want to say, oh, look how good I am. I, I'm, I'm so spot on with note for notes, you know? It's like there's nothing personal here about it, but look how good I am. Or do you want to make those people feel what that song is about? Because when you connect on an emotional level with that song, you portray that emotion across and your audience feels that emotion. Whether, well, no matter the emotion, whether it's being happy, being angry, being sad, no matter what, they will feel it and you will connect with them on that visceral level. It will just change that whole dynamic of your performances and it will take it to another level, I guarantee it. Okay, now before I go on, I will be back in a minute, but I want to pay some, you know, respect to my awesome sponsors that make this page responsible. After the video, check them out in the links and give them some love because they help make this happen. You know, Conceptual Creative and Lay Guitars are unreal. You've got to check them out. So we'll be back right after this. Hey guys, let me tell you about Conceptual Creative. They're absolutely awesome, you have to check them out. If you need a professional website done, if you need web hosting or other online services, they've got you covered. You gotta check them out. If you wanna be a professional, you have to have a professional online presence. And for 90% of us, 99% of us, we need help with that. Get professional help. See Conceptual Creative today. Yeah. Lag guitars, they're an amazing instrument. Yeah, you know, whether you're a beginner who just needs this guitar to practice on, or whether you're a professional who needs a reliable, great sounding guitar on stage, you can't go past lag guitars. They're just incredible instruments. So check them out today. Okay, so we're back. Now, we're talking about prostituting yourself and making yourself a whore. <laughs> I know, it sounds so bad, but it is. Now, another thing to think about is, you know, there are exceptions to the rule, all right? Let's take Sweet Home Alabama, for example. That is a political, angry song. But it's not that to most people anymore. You know, go back to when it was written, yeah, it, it's this very political, angry song. But for most people, it's a good, fun dance around, yee you know, it's more of an party anthem and an anthem for the southern states of the US and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't have the same meaning that it does, so that is your exception to the rule because most people don't see it as that political thing. Most people don't care anymore that Neil Young dissed the southern states and, and all that sort of stuff if you listen to the words. Most people don't even know what they mean anymore. So that is one, you know, it doesn't have the same standing in society that it once did. So you can kind of play it up and have some fun and party with it and everyone gets into it, it's a fun song they know and all that sort of stuff. So that is an exception to the rule. Another one is um, Summer of 69. That is a song, it's timeless. You look at, go to the clubs and that, you will have all generations dancing to that song, loving that song, singing that song. And most of them were born well after 1969, myself included. You know, it's like I can't relate to that song from a 60s point of view, but it, that doesn't matter. I can relate to the things in that song that, you know, built my first real six string. How I can relate to that and, and go through it. Because those themes that are in that song transgressed from the 60s into the 70s, into the 80s, into the 90s. You know, that song could be called Summer of 89, Summer of 99, and it would still fit and people can get into that song. So you got to also look at how a song is societ societally recognized. The, the, sometimes the emotion has been come out of it or it can be changed and related to differently and it doesn't matter as much. Now, still, be that rock and roller who's put everything on their line, you know, like living on a prayer. You know, how many people can relate to that even though it was written back in the 80s? You know, that you still hear people singing Living on a Prayer. The songs can transgress time periods as well. So you find out what it is. Like Living on Prayer, if you're going to sing it, then relate to it in that context as well. 
But there are exceptions where you don't have to put as much emphasis into your emotional connection with the song. But that's where you have to examine what you're singing. Have a look. You know, what is the song saying, first and foremost? How is it recognized in today's society? And if you have to make a deep emotional connection with it, whether it's anger, whether it's sadness, whether it's, you know, happiness or whatever, find that emotion. If you can relate to the song literally, awesome. You know, to a degree. You know, hopefully it's not too bad, but if you can't, then find something in your life that you can connect to. Uh, it's like uh, my song House of Pain. Now that, that's a cover of a Faster Pussycat song and I'll, I'll try and link it at the end. I'll, I'll, I'll put a link somewhere but I'll probably have a link at the end of the video as well. Um, now I connect that, that's one of the most personal songs I've ever recorded even though I didn't write it. Now that is just it's about this thing over here, and that's what people think I'm singing about. I related, I relate to that song from a different time in my life, and over here, and it's personal to me. So I brought out those emotions of what that song means to me, and that's okay. If people think I'm singing about this, and they're thinking that I'm relating, and that sort of stuff has exactly happened in my life, even though it's similar but different and I've got my own personal reasons with it, I connect with it on such a raw level. And the problem with that is, it's such an emotionally draining song as well, is when I do it, it just crashes the room. Um, because it's such a depressing song. And if, if I sing it right and I put everything into it, I guarantee you everybody in the room is just like, oh my God, it's so depressing. People love the song. People, you know, because it's such an emotional song, it's such a great song, but it's emotionally draining and very upsetting. And if I do it right and I convey that pain, they're feeling it. And it's to the point where I've had kind of got a telegraph. It's like, look, I know this song. I don't do it often because it just brings down the room because most people know I like to try and keep things upbeat and fun and light. And you know, this is a real room killer because when I do it right, everybody's depressed. So I telegraph it and say, look, I know that I'm, I'm going to do this song and it's going to bring the room down. Everybody's going to be depressed, but I promise I'll pick it up again after I sing this song when, you know, when I know it's time to do it. But it also shows how you can control a room. You can make people happy. You can make people sad. You can, you can change the entire dynamic of the room. If you have control of the, the songs and you have control of the emotions. So it's more than just performing the notes. If you're just gonna be background music and just, oh la la la, look how good I am, I'm hitting all the notes, la la la, you, you might, they might as well be listening to a CD. Because there's no personal connection with the person trying to entertain them. And you, you know, that, that does well for many people. Many people make a good living off it. But when you make that connection with those people, there's nothing like it. And you can control how the room goes. And that's where we were talking about the importance of making your sets flow and all that sort of stuff. Because if you sing the right song, you could just crash the room and everybody feeling like they want to neck themselves and just so depressed. But you can also do the opposite and lift them up with such energy and get them pumping and you know you're giving them energy and they're giving you back energy and it's just thumping and powerful and just such a great time but you can also do the same with anger you know you can make everyone so agitated and angry and rah, and that works for metal bands you know a lot of the metal bands that are, you know are doing angst and you know anger and, and and they're just ripping it up and there's something for everybody there's a time for everything you know, there's a time to get angry, there's a time to get sad, there's a time to get happy. And this is where it comes back to flowing, making your sets flow and knowing the power of what happens when you invest yourself into it. Because there's nothing like it. You can control the room, how you do it, if you, if you make those connections with the song. If you connect with the song and you give the audience and you prostitute those emotions out to them, 
they will respond because they are seeing raw emotion. No matter what the emotion is, it's a raw emotion that you're allowing them to be a part of. And they will feed back, you know, they will give it to you back, you know, how they, they're reacting. So you can control the room. It's just an amazing feeling. And also, it just takes your performance to another level. You know, that's where these stars just go nuts. It's like they're, they're on a totally different level because they're connecting with their music. It's not a, oh, look at me, I'm so great. You know, it's about, this is my music. Okay, yeah. You know, for originals, it's pretty easy to do because you've sort of written the song yourself. But there's also times where you might get lazy and you're just going through the motions. This is where you've got to snap yourself out of it and get back into it and find the emotion when you wrote that song and put it in there every night. But also it can pertain to, pertain to covers as well. Just because you didn't write the song doesn't mean you can't find that connection because your audience finds connection in songs. Whether it's your songs or someone else's songs, they can just enjoy the music and find relatable content in it and if there's emotion they will feel it so yes you are becoming a whore if you're going to perform right you are whoring your emotions out to people for their entertainment most likely to get paid for it but there's nothing wrong with that and that's my point this is something that's really important that's why this video is a little long I wanted to describe it because it's such an important issue that so many young up-and-coming artists, they're, they're worried about technique. Forget technique, right? If you know you can hit the song, that's great. You've got your technique, right? You know you can nail it. You've sung it a million times. Now, find that connection with it. And if you don't nail it every time, you will nail it most times. If you can already hit the song just by going through the motions, you'll have no problems when you find that connection. But there will be times where maybe you get a little bit choked up and a little bit sad or a little bit angry and the, you don't quite hit it. The crowd isn't going to care. If they're feeling that emotion and they're invested in connecting with you, you hitting a bum note or two, don't matter if you're conveying that that bum note is because of the emotion. Because that's even more emotion that they're going to feel. So this is the importance of finding those connections with those songs. So whatever you're singing, sit down, have a look at it. What is the song actually saying? How does the song fit in societal acceptance now? You know, is it, um, you know, is it like a Sweet Home Alabama that the meaning of it is kind of got lost? Or is it something that's totally emotional and needs that full on connection? Um, and then once you found how that is, find out how you relate to it. Is it a literal re relation to that song? Like you, something like that has happened in your life so you can convey that. Or do you have to find something that's in your life or in your past to dig up that emotion to sing that song? And then get into it and let it loose, go on stage, and expose yourself. <laughs> I know that sounds really bad. But yeah, that's what it's about. Because it's too many people that they're just going through the motions now. And it's like they're boring. You know, they're boring to watch. You know, if, if it's just mimicking other people, I'll rather watch the original artist. You know, this is where that X factor comes into things. Because it's about being the music. It's not about conveying, just blah, letting it out. It's about actually being part of that musical instrument that's reaching out to the crowd. But again, subscribe, notification bell, like, check out the sponsors. I hope you've enjoyed this. I want you guys to be the best performers you can be. And yeah, don't miss the upcoming videos. There's still more to come. And yeah, I hope you've liked this. Until then, I'm Marche. This is Exploring Music. See ya!